ha has everyone calmed down now? This thing's been reprinted a million times by Ravensburger. The price has come down to close to MSRP. And not only are we through the second set, but we're about to be on to the third release for Disney Lorcana. But with everything going on in the community, the price crashes, the tanking, the singles, it's time to ask a question that's been burning in the back of my mind for a long time now. Is Disney Lorcana collectible? When it comes to collectability, we get into a space where, well, to each their own. If you are proud of the things that you display and that you own, heck, that makes them collectible to me. But in this sense, in this video, we are going to talk about collectability as a community might see fit. For example, a lot of people view vintage magic as collectible. Enough people and enough of the community view vintage magic as collectible that it's generally just accepted that it is a collectible product. So we are going to answer a tough question about Disney Lorcana. Is this thing, the product in this box, or maybe even the sealed box itself, collectible, and will it ever be collectible? And this is an important question to ask. We have seen time and time again card games get released to the community, and while yes, enough product needs to be serviced to a community to where people can get the cards in their hand and play the game, there also has to be a fine line, a balance if you will, where people feel proud to own these things. That is why they have card protectors and sleeves and binders and crazy people like me have shelves like this because, well, we just like looking at the things and there's enough people out there that do too. But collectability, like we talked about, is an insane balance. If there's too much of something, well, everyone can get their hands on it so nobody really feels proud to own it and the general consensus is this becomes less collectible. But it's not just about scarcity. We've seen other TCGs print things in low numbers and they're still not collectible. Why? Because, well, people also has to want them. So we are going to discover and explore Disney Lore kind of collectability and answer some questions. And as we go through here, I recommend that you at least consider subscribing because we're not only racing to 7,500, but this box is actually going to be open for a channel member. If you want a box opening of Lorcana, they're $139 for channel members. Our video is getting recorded this week. Make sure you join the channel membership and consider doing that too. But collectability for Disney Lorcana is something that has gone through its highs and lows in this game's extremely short life cycle. Remember, this game just came out mid 2023 and here we are and just for some perspective Disney Lore kind of the first chapter has sold 30,000 sealed products on TCG player and Rise of the Floodborne is about halfway there. Disney Lore kind of the first chapter has brought in about 3.1 million dollars in revenue and no surprise the product has been around half as long as brought in about half that much. These numbers are insane. And in fact, Disney Lore kind of did something that we'll talk about on the Friday morning live stream, but I'll tease here. It actually outsold in the month of December, its release month. This is not something we see with products, and this just indicates that, yes, it's important to note, Ravensburger did not get the print runs right initially, but the product is now out and free flowing and readily available. And because of this, more and more people have picked up Disney Lore kind of cards. They have added them to their collections, or are they collections? What we're here to discover. And they have been playing the game in large numbers. But as this product has been reprinted and reprinted and reprinted, this kind of damages the collectability. And you see that in the enchanted cards. At one point, all of the enchanted cards, every single one of them, held an insane value. These were valuable cards that people who liked Disney Lorcana or were early adopters of Disney Lorcana held in high regard. And for good reason. These cards are hard to pull. And remember, this was a time when the product was extremely limited. Booster boxes approached a price of $420. So nice. So the opportunity to get out there and pull one of these cards cost consumers like you and I a pretty penny. But with reprint after reprint and price drop after price drop, these cards are more readily available. And while they still seem to hold a special place in people's hearts, when there's a ton of them out there, they definitely don't feel as special. So we take a knock to collectability there. Furthermore, the second set of Disney Lorcana has released. So people didn't necessarily have to continue to wait around for you know the first chapter anymore. They could get their collectability or their Disney Lorcana fix 
through another product. And while yes, that product is going under some of the same reprint problems that the first chapter went through, it was another avenue for people to go after these cards and you know add cards to their collection in their deck and experience Disney Lorcana in any way they saw fit. So as boxes got more plentiful and Ravensburger did the thing that they said they were going to do, again, I remind you, Ravensburger shouted from the mountaintop, we're gonna print this thing till it's near MSRP. And gosh darn it, give them credit, because they did that. That takes not only a lot of courage, a lot of bravery, a lot of belief in your product to do that, but to kind of give up some of that hype. It shows that you really mean what you say, and I think they deserve a little bit of credit there. And hey, bonus points, there's tape on the side of the box. We're actually going to talk about that in a little bit. But this is a ding to collectability, right? This product, now that it's more readily available, is less collectible. It's just that simple, right? Well, not really. In my opinion, collectability also comes from the emotional intelligence or standpoint from a community and their ties to that product. And as more people have the opportunity to get sweet cardboard like this into their hands, I think we are going to see a wider amount of people build an emotional tie to this product. So while in the short term, collectability like the enchanted cards did take a little bit of a hit, I think that more people experiencing this, having Disney Lorcana as a core memory, having this being something that they turn to in their TCG journey is only going to boost collectability for Disney Lorcana. It's only going to make people want more and more and more of this, and we've seen this time and time again. Magic the Gathering, for example, probably the best trading card game currently on the market. Despite what you think of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, the game is millions of players strong. It is constantly in people's hands, and it's the one place you can go to almost any game store in the continental United States and find yourself a game at any given time. This set had, or this game had early sets that were were printed in large numbers or not necessarily adopted by the community at the time it's not something that they loved so but you look back on those sets now and they're extremely collectible people would love to not only get the singles from the sets into their hands but the sealed box from those sets into their hands and this should just seal it right disney Lorcana building that iconic nature building that emotional connection means of course it's collectible look at magic the gathering well i'm gonna dupe you again because well, I don't think that applies here. It's also not safe to apply here. Things like Magic the Gathering and the Pokemon trading card game have 20 to 30 years of baked in experience, baked in ties, just this long time to just tug at the players and collectors and people involved in the TCG's heartstrings. And this is something that you can not replace. You cannot fast track this. We have seen games like the Flesh and Blood trading card game attempt to fast track this with high players in their community saying, well, no, this commands this price. It's an extremely limited asset. I'm willing to pay $10,000 for it. Thus, it's $10,000. And that doesn't always apply. In fact, often the bottom falls out of a model like that way too quickly. So with Disney Lorcana, I believe the game is actively avoiding that scenario. It gets points here, in my opinion, towards collectability because collectability seems to have to come naturally. So that is an answer that we aren't able to answer yet. We haven't had any years of success. And with the bumpy road that trading card games undergo, heck, how many have we seen come and go in our lifetime? Looking at you, Bandai. But we need to see Disney lore kind of last for a long time. And there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Yes, all early success point towards Disney lore kind of being, you know, something that can stand the test of time. But it's way too early to call. It's been two sets. It's been half a year. Everyone needs to calm down on that point. But back to the main issue, we have this give and take, this tug of things that are going to be collectible, and it's worth noting that the general consensus, the community for Disney Lorcana right now, doesn't really seem to be interested in collecting either the single cards or the sealed box. And that is why, as a collector, I am always going to have some of these on my shelf. In my opinion, this is a product with a that will have the potential to be highly collectible. And none of this is advice to anyone. We talked about the general consensus for collectability. And now I want to talk about my personal experience. So if you take all of your money and spend it on Lorcana because I said I'm going to collect it, that is your fault. I'm a guy in his basement talking about TCGs who you should definitely subscribe subscribe to and consider joining the channel membership. But that aside, do not take advice from what I do. However, 
this is what I'm going to do. I often like to look at things where people don't see a lot of collectability. When people tell me that's not collectible, that's not collectible, that's not collectible, it kind of puts my antenna up a little bit. I'm like, nah. If you say it's not collectible, and the whole community says it's not collectible, however, it's selling in massive numbers and everyone seems to want to be involved in it and love the product once they get into their hands, kind of feels like an opportunity for me personally to get something that I believe one day could be collectible. Now, this is extremely ris risky. There's so many factors in the way. What's the reprint policy from Ravensburger? Who knows? They've never made a TCG before. How many boxes of this product specifically are they going to make? Millions more? We will never know those exact numbers. And will Disney Lorcana even be around this time next year? Or will Disney be like, eh, we don't really feel like giving you the license anymore. I think we're kind of done. All of those questions could absolutely destroy any collectability argument out there. But if Disney Lorcana is going to stand the test of time, which I believe in the short term it will, I could not see this game disappearing in five years. However, it very well could, and that's a risk I am willing to take. I also believe that the game's iconic nature, its core in something that so many of us here in the United States just love through and through to our heart and soul. Heck, my wife and my daughter get involved on Disney Lord Connor. She's got mini cards upstairs that she just plays with. It's the first time she showed any interest in something like that. I truly believe that there's opportunity for this iconic nature. And if it falls through and falls out, it will always remind me of a fun time in my life when I got to chit chat with all of you guys, make YouTube videos, and open some sweet, sweet cardboard. As I said, this box is actually being opened for a channel member, $139. Everything shipped to your door. We have three boxes left. Make sure you let me know if you want one. You can email me at hometowntcg at gmail.com. Now, I think my lean towards collectability is something that I'm going to apply to other TCGs as well as, you know, something like Magic the Gathering. I've shown this to you in the past where I collect player rewards promos. I collect gilded foil charms, things that people don't necessarily want to get their hands on. But I've always been a player first and Disney Lord kind of strong player base. The number of people just jamming games at the kitchen table or getting their families involved, I think furthers my argument that this has the potential to be something highly collectible. For me personally, I believe Disney Lorcana is at a very low point in collectability, especially with the tons of reprints, the four sets a year feeling like, oh my, for a new TCG, this is a lot of product. I really think there's a lot of opportunity here, and I am proud to add this to my collection. But most importantly, I want to hear from you. What do you plan to do with Disney Lorcana? Are you involved in collecting it at all? Do you still think, despite the prices crashing and sales going up, more sales of sealed product on TCG Player than even release month, than any other month, over you know, 30,000 sealed products, $3 million, or three, yeah, $3.1 million brought in. If you still don't believe in Disney Lorcana, it's a scam, it's a pump and dump, I'm okay hearing that from you too. I always love everyone's opinion. I appreciate you guys. And finally, if you haven't yet, share this video. If you've never shared a hometown TCG video, now is a better time than ever. Share this in any of the Lorcana forums, pages, discords that you are involved in, because not only do I love to grow the community and get as many outside perspectives as possible, but it does just make me smile a little bit. That being said, I am so excited to add this to my collection. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh, and we will see you around. All right, take it easy, everyone.